Hi, my name is Dr. Shell. Thank you so much for coming to my Dr. Test Prep YouTube channel. And the focus right now is helping you improve on the PSAT and SAT by knowing how to use the Desmos calculator. Hopefully you've already clicked the Desmos calculator link. You have it open on your screen and you've chosen the College Board calculator. If you just do a regular Desmos graphing calculator, you won't be able to do all the cool stuff that we're doing. Now, right now we are focusing on Khan Academy's Unit 2, Lesson 7, um, which is Linear Inequality Word problems. So con videos are fantastic, but they don't have a strong focus on the graphing calculator and it's not their fault. Their videos are from before you can use the graphing calculator. Okay. Now I know you could, there's lots of graphing calculators you can use, but everyone gets the decimals one embedded for free. So why not just use that one? That way you don't have to worry about batteries or anything else. All right, let's look at this. Uh, we're doing the basic examples. If you have my book, we are on page 32. Now you can always find my book, but you don't have to. So get paper and pencil. Just make sure you follow along on Desmos. Sarah is saving money for a trip. She wants to have at least a thousand dollars. So Sarah wants more than a thousand dollars. Now we have to ask if Sarah gets $999, would she be happy? No. If she gets exactly a thousand dollars, would she be happy if it's at least a thousand? Yes. So that's how we're going to put the little line underneath. And then if she gets 1,001, 2,000, happy. She currently has $200 and plus she wants to save $25 per week. And it tells us that X is weeks. So write and solve the inequality to determine how many weeks that she needs. Well, we know that this is Sarah's plan and she wants at least 1,000. So this is our inequality. It's really... For the word problems, the trick is to just read slowly. And if you keep watching the video, my word problem videos, you'll understand the pattern a lot more easily. So I'm going to type in 200 plus 25x, and I'm going to tell you two ways to put in the greater than or equal than sign. I like to use the keyboard. So I hit the shift period to get the greater than symbol. And then if you hit equals on the keyboard, it automatically gives you greater than or equal than or equal to or you can hit the keyboard and then just click the button, either one, um, and then 1,000. And then you're like, but Dr. Eric, I can't see the answer. Well, remember in my other videos, I taught you to just go to that little gear and make change it to like 100. And then it becomes so much easier to see that the answer is 32 weeks. Okay, let's look at number two. For number two, we have um, a bookstore has a sale where each book is discounted by 20%. If the original price of the book is X, which inequality represents the discounted price being less than $15? So a couple of things. I intentionally threw this in because when we get to exponential functions and later units and lessons, you're going to need to know that you have to subtract. So even though it's 20% off, we have 100%. If you have $100 and you give $20 away, you have $80 left. So that's why I did, didn't want to confuse you on here, but I have all of them say 0 0.8. So that means 80% of the original price. So it says, which represents the discounted price being less than 15? So let's talk about what less than 15 means. Does, can the price be $14? Yes. Can the price be $15? Well, if it has to be less than $15, no, it can be $14.99, but it can't be $15 because it has to be less. Can it be $16? No. So we know that we need to have numbers this way. So basically it'll be 0.8x is less than 15. Now, how you can use the graphing calculator is you can just type each one in and then see if it makes sense. So if I have 0.8x, is greater than 15, that doesn't make sense. That means the book is more than $15. If I have it the other way, yes, that makes sense. And if I go in, I can see, you know, exactly what the X value is, but we don't, the X value stands for the original price. So in this case, it tells us that the original price was $18.75, which you didn't need to know for this equation, but that's what that X value means. That's why it's not at the 15. All right, let's move on to question number three. A car rental company charges a flat fee of $40 plus 25 cents a mile. So notice all of these already have that written for us. If M is the number of miles driven, which 
50 represents the cost being less than 100. So we're going to still do our 99, 100, and 101. If it costs $99, is that less than 100? Yes. So that means we know it's going to go this way. If it costs $100, is that okay? $100 is not less than $100, so no. And it can't be 101 because that's not less than 100. So we know it's going to be choice B because it's less than, the mileage is less than 100, and we don't have the equal symbol. The other thing I want to know, and I put it on the bottom of page 32, just remember that the SAT is, and the PSAT is just one test in time, okay? Especially with the SAT, you can take it multiple times. I recommend you take it at least two, if not three times. The first time to get rid of the jitters and to inform Khan what you need to work on. The second time is really like, all right, this is it. And if you still don't get the score you want, you can keep studying for the third. So it's just one time. Some of you are amazing musicians and not great test takers, but you're going to be better because I'm teaching you the Desmos calculator. So don't stress about a score, okay? Life will end up working out as it should. All right. Well, I'm going to still say, I tell my students all the time, love you guys. I'm so proud of you for sticking with me. Um, stay tuned. We're going to do the next set on page 33, which are the harder examples on linear equalities. Bye.